Hey everyone! So for me, it was very odd in college when I decided I either wanted to be a scientist or an engineer. So the next question I would have asked myself is, did I want to pursue a career in academia or industry? Eventually, I chose to go down the industry path, but for many years before that, I was a PhD student at Stanford. And so while I was a grad student, I got to see up close the day-to-day -day lives of research associates, professors, and so it gave me a good idea of what it was like working in academia, and I got to see things that were more hidden for me when I was just a college student. And so this is a video with some thoughts that I would have loved to share with my younger self when I was choosing a career path, but can now share with other people that have similar curiosities. So let's get started. I'm going to begin by starting off with what could be an overgeneralization, but still valid, I think. Choosing a path between industry and academia in many ways is a trade-off between the amount of funding and money available versus the freedom in your projects. So let's start off by talking about what industry life is like. In my industry for now, I mean larger companies. I'll talk about like startups and exceptions at the very end. When you're working for a larger company, often like money and funding is quite plentiful. If the company is very well established, they're probably making income. Uh, there might be investments. And so because there is more funding available to invest into the projects, the salaries will be higher. And so funding and money is usually an issue that's hidden away from, for instance, the scientists, engineers, the staff members, except in extreme cases when there's like a recession or an economic downturn. And so from a financial standpoint, a lot of these companies, larger companies are in a very strong position. And so now let's talk about the project itself. Unlike in academia and research where you can sort of change directions whenever you like, when you're building a product, the end goal is set for you. You know where it is that you want to end up. There is some creativity on how you get to that end goal, but usually the leadership is very clear about what it is that you're trying to build here. Not only that, the products that you're trying to sell, the features that you're trying to build that are integrated into these products to be sold to customers, they are usually built based off of what we call mature technology. And by mature technology, I mean that a lot of these technologies are, are well understood, they've been tested thoroughly, they're robust, because when you're building a product that's being sold to many, many, many customers out there, the product has to work. And so you would not expect to have a feature like in research where you have hot off the press material concepts being integrated into the product that you're trying to sell to these customers because it's got to work and it's got to get good reviews so that they can sell more of it. You have to sell a robust, high quality working product. Okay, so now let's focus on career paths in academia. And you'll notice I'm going to be talking a lot about research. And you might tell me, well, you know, professors are dealing with research as well as teaching, and both are important. But I'm going to be largely focused on research because that is where a lot of the emphasis is placed. When professors get hired to a university, they're usually hired based on their strong research ability rather than their ability to teach. Obviously, it'd be great if they were good teachers, but it's their ability to do research that will allow them to progress in their career. And so I will focus on that. And plus, you have a lot of research associates that also get hired to universities. So the life of academia financially is often a huge, huge struggle because every single day they're constantly worried about where the next funding source is coming from. They need this funding in order to keep their lab running, to pay salaries, to continue doing research so that they can write more grants and get more funding. And so that's basically a big, big percentage of what professors, research associates, and even postdocs have to deal with. And so the money and the funding involved in academia is not to the same magnitude as what large corporations are dealing with. And so obviously salaries will be lower. If you're a grad student or a PhD student, you'll know you're not getting paid very much, uh, probably a small student stipend. And that's because they're given a certain amount of grant money and they have to allocate it properly. Now, these grant sources usually come from public organizations like NSF, National Science Foundation, or NIH, National Institute of Health, and occasionally private companies. 
But the nice thing about being in academia is that professors, research associates, they have a lot more freedom to pursue whatever passions they want. These grant money, although they are usually tied to some field, you know, deep learning, wireless, whatever, there's often more freedom and leeway as to how they allocate their funds to which projects and which subjects that they want to pursue. And so that's the trade-off. You're not dealing with the level of funding in corporations, but you get more leeway and freedom as to what you want to study. And a lot of the focus in academia is not building a product so that you can sell to as many customers and bring as much revenue as you can. The focus is on doing research, learning, making discoveries, and from that, you're publishing your results and then presenting it to the world. It's not to say that some of these ideas and technologies that you find in your research can't be put into a product. There are a lot of startups that have spun off of people's research projects, but unlike in corporation where the immediate goal is working on a product, the immediate goal in academia is increasing knowledge base. And only afterwards, maybe some of these ideas can be integrated into products that we can sell to customers. So I've talked about larger companies and in industry, and I've talked about you know, academia. Now let's get into areas where these two paths sort of overlap, the gray area in between. So I talked a little earlier about startups and how it's different from working for a larger company. Working at a startup can feel like a weird overlap between academia and industry. I've had friends who worked at startups. I also worked in a pseudo startup myself. In terms of the funding situation that startups have to deal with, it is very similar to being in academia in that you're constantly worried about the next source of funding, constantly pitching to investors, trying to bring in money so that you can pay the employees, continue paying for the technologies to build your product. And so it can be a huge struggle from a money standpoint. The salaries are gonna be lower. You often compensate people by giving them equity as well. And the equity is more of a hope that one day it will be liquidable if the company were to get bought or go public. And so the money situation can be tougher in a startup. That being said, there can be more freedom in terms of the direction you wanna go in or the product you wanna work on. However, there is the caveat here. Often, the company is being funded by investors. Once you do take money from these investors, they have a huge say as to the direction that your company should go in. And so in summary, startups have elements similar to academia and elements, of course, of industry. Now let's go on to the next topic. Some of you may ask me, well, what about research positions in large companies? Don't they always have R&D departments? And you're absolutely right. If you are a large company or a large corporation and you want to stay relevant, it would be wise if the leadership invested in an R&D department or research and development department. Because if you want to be relevant in the next couple years, you need people to do research on what are the trends, what could be a successful feature down the line. And only then can a large company that is strong continue to be strong in the years to come. And so a lot of larger companies, assuming they have extra money to spare, they will put in an initial investment into research projects. Often they'll hire PhDs because PhDs are very familiar with doing research. They will have these people work on projects in the hope of creating features that can be integrated into their future products. And because it's an initial investment, they wouldn't necessarily expect this department to generate income immediately. Now, if you work on research in a company, your schedule can often be different from people working on product because products have very defined release dates, product cycles, and the schedule is pretty set. With research, the schedule can be more ambiguous because it's research. You're trying to make discoveries and it's very, very hard to time things properly. That being said, the research that you work on hopefully will ultimately be integrated into the products that can be sold to your customers. So if you are a person who enjoys doing research and you don't wanna deal with the funding struggles of being in academia, joining the R&D department for maybe a larger company can be an option for you. 
So there it is, some of my thoughts on career paths in academia, industry. There are probably more career options out there, but this was the question that I was asking myself. People may agree or disagree, but I suppose that's what the comment section is for. Hopefully this was interesting and helpful if you were like me, trying to decide on what career path to take. Hope you enjoyed this and have a nice day.